Tonight on this New Year's Eve, the celebrations have already started across the world. The amazing spectacles from Sydney to Hong Kong ringing in 2024 with a bang. While in Times Square, one million people packing in for the most famous celebration of all. This is kind of a once in a lifetime thing that you just gotta do. Is New York ready? The other big story, a deadly clash in the Red Sea. The U.S. Navy attacked, striking back with lethal force for the first time, sinking three ships from Yemen, killing those on board. The biggest escalation there yet. Millions of Americans get a pay raise tomorrow. The minimum wage is going up in half of all states in 2024. Some restaurants already laying off people because of it. You may not know about all that confetti coming down in Times Square tonight. They carry wind into the new year. I wish for happiness and love for my family. A healthy baby boy in May 2024. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Hello and Happy New Year's Eve. As we get ready to mark the moment across the U.S., there are, of course, a lot of places where it's already 2024. Berlin just rang in the new year with fireworks at the Brandenburg Gate. Paris is marking 2024 by celebrating the upcoming Summer Olympics. And earlier, we watched Sydney, Beijing, Hong Kong, and Bangkok turn the page on the calendar. In this country, all eyes on that big ball in Times Square. This is a live picture now of the thousands packed in on a pretty clear and cold night in New York. Our George Solis has been out there all day long and has more on the festivities and the security measures in place. Twenty twenty four is upon us. Parts of the world already ringing in the new year with dazzling displays of lights and fireworks. From the iconic Harbor Bridge and Opera House in Sydney, Australia, where the show left crowds of more than a million in awe. <laughs> to Auckland, New Zealand, the very first major city to welcome 2024. <laughs> and across parts of Asia, joy and excitement like this celebration in Beijing. <laughs> Cities honoring ancient traditions too. Like this one in Tokyo, ringing in the new year with this massive bell. And look at this bird's eye view of fireworks over Hong Kong's Victoria Harbor. These drones sparkling near Dubai. But at one of the biggest bashes of them all, New York's Times Square is packed with partiers soaking up every second. Many lining up since early this morning to see it all. And you are prepared to wait this through midnight? Yes, I am. I put layers on and I got my sign so everybody at home in Toledo, Ohio can see me. Others here to make new memories. Honestly, for me, it's a really big deal. Um, I've never had a New Year's kiss before. And, you know, we're finally going to get to have that. Yeah. We will be here until the last piece of confetti is picked up. For officials, though, security is the number one concern. Mid ongoing tension from the Israel Hamas war. New York's finest covering every nook and cranny to make sure this party goes off without a hitch. One of their biggest tools this year, their eyes in the skies. Drones, just like this one, are one of the many tools the NYPD will be using to keep a bird's eye view on this massive celebration. The NYPD says there are no specific or credible threats to the city. We are doing a lot of work behind the scenes. We're looking for leads. We're looking for threats online that may manifest here in the flesh. We will continue to do so. We're very prepared. Meanwhile in Europe, it's now also a new year. City of lights and across the globe. Glittering displays holding promise and hope for a good year to come. And George joins me now live from Times Square, where, George, it looks like revelers will be treated to some decent weather tonight. Yeah, that's right, Kate. It is a comfortable 40 degrees and it's dry. It's near picture perfect weather for the million or so revelers expected to watch that ball drop here in Times Square. Kate? All right, you have the best seat in the house, George. Thank you. Now let's turn to a major escalation in the Middle East involving American forces. The U.S. Navy says it retaliated against attackers from Yemen in the Red Sea after they fired on Navy helicopters. It is the first lethal action taken by the U.S. military in those waters since the Israel-Hamas war began. Megan Fitzgerald has the latest. Tonight, the most aggressive action yet against the U.S. Navy in the Red Sea since the Israel-Hamas war broke out. 
The U.S. Defense Department saying four boats with Houthi rebels from Yemen firing on U.S. Navy helicopters. Those choppers firing back, sinking three of the four ships and killing all crew members on board. The fourth boat got away. The incident started when the small boat started firing on the Merck's Hangzhou vessel. The container ship issuing a distress call and firing back until the Navy arrived. The U.S. Central Command saying the rebels were just feet away from getting on board the merchant ship. The Houthis are an Iranian-backed rebel group which controls large parts of Yemen. How big of a threat are the Houthi rebels? They've been surprisingly large threat. They say they're targeting Israeli shipping or is Israel-associated shipping, but in fact, they're going after uh, what really is 12 percent of all global commercial traffic. Sunday's incident, the first time the U.S. has used deadly force while responding to the recent Houthi attacks in the Red Sea. The latest incident coming two weeks after the Defense Department says the USS Kearney shot down 14 drones launched from Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen. These waters are one of the busiest shipping routes in the world. Vessels trying to make their way to the Suez Canal in Egypt, which connects to the Mediterranean Sea. But to get there, ships must first pass through the waters off the coast of Yemen. The same area where the U.S. says the Houthis have launched 23 illegal attacks on shipping vessels since November 19th. Megan joins us now. Megan, we're getting reaction from inside Yemen to this incident. Kate, the Houthi media authority tells NBC News that every attack on their forces will be responded to. Kate. All right, Megan, thank you. There are new developments also in Israel, where Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is defying calls to resign, and the military just announced a major change for many reservists who were called up. Josh Letterman reports from Tel Aviv. Tonight, as Israeli airstrikes rain down on south and central Gaza, Prime Minister Netanyahu is vowing the war will go on for many more months, telling the nation the IDF needs more time to rout Hamas and rebuffing calls to resign after the war. As Israel pushes deeper into Gaza, the Hamas-run Palestinian health ministry says another 150 people were killed in a single day. Hundreds of others badly wounded. But a rare piece of good news for the spiraling humanitarian crisis. Israel says it's ready to let European nations deliver aid to Gaza by sea. Tonight, a team of six American surgeons has arrived in Gaza to help and told NBC News what they're seeing. The sanitation uh, is unbelievable. People living in the hallway, sleeping in the hallway, cooking. Uh, um, it's just uh, a, a recipe for disaster, for infection. On this New Year's Eve, there is no celebration in Israel for the families of more than 100 hostages. I want to get my life back. I haven't slept for 86 days. And survivors of Hamas's October 7th terror attack are still steeped in trauma. Noah Mazel Ben David survived the Nova Music Festival, where 364 people were slaughtered. The remnants of that day have been put on display in Tel Aviv. Noam is seeing it for the first time. I was behind those. Noam and her boyfriend David hid with 14 others in a dumpster. She was shot in the hip, but survived. This is my boyfriend. And he was killed. He's murdered, not killed. He's murdered. He saved my life. We're listening to Israel's national anthem play right now. That's the perfect sound I want in the background. How strong we are. They're going to be with us, dance with us. We're going to remember it. Every one. And Josh is with us now from Tel Aviv. Josh, Israel made an announcement about the reserve soldiers who were called up for the war, right? That's right, Kate. Israel says some of the 300,000 reservists called up after October 7th will be going home for now. The IDF says that will let them rest up for more fighting in the coming year. Kate? All right, Josh, thank you so much. Now to the war in Ukraine and a new wave of attacks from Russia. Two people were killed and 28 injured after Russia pounded the Ukrainian city of Kharkiv with missiles and drones. It's the latest of several major attacks from both sides in recent days. It all began when Russia bombarded cities across Ukraine on Friday. Then dozens were killed in a Russian border city on Saturday. As we prepare to ring in the new year, millions of Americans are getting set to get pay raises starting tomorrow. 
tomorrow. That's when minimum wage will begin to go up in half of all the U.S. states. But for business owners, it means more expense, with some already planning to lay off workers. Sam Brock has more. After years of fighting for a higher wage floor in cities across the country, the new year is going to bring a new paycheck for millions of Americans, with about half of all states and the District of Columbia either raising the minimum wage on January 1st or at some point during the year. Hawaii's increase will be the largest, while Washington will have the highest minimum wage of any state at more than $16 an hour. But it's California and fast food workers like Anisha Williams who are seeing the most seismic changes after years of struggles. I have to pick and choose um, between rent, groceries, um, and livelihood. Now, the Golden State's minimum wage jumps to $16 at the beginning of the year, and for fast food workers, it rises to 20 in April. The mother of six, Williams, says that is definite progress. We've protested every which way to prove our point. But businesses are reacting, especially in California, where several Pizza Hut franchise owners will reportedly lay off more than a thousand drivers statewide and rely instead on companies like DoorDash. For mom and pop shops like Frankie's Pizza in Old Town Sacramento, the owner tells us the wage hike will mean longer hours for him. Are you saying you would hire more employees, but because of the rate hike, that is no longer an option? I cannot do it. I can't. Um, I mean, who's going to pay it? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be able to afford to do it. I have to uh, work longer hours to compensate for that. This new reality for many businesses, coming as 20 states still rely on the decades old federal minimum wage of 725 in place since 2009. While workers like Williams see new opportunities. So many people doubting us and sometimes I can't even believe it, you know, and I'm just so, I'm so happy. Sam Brock, NBC News. The deadly shark attack in Maui, where a 39-year-old man died after an encounter when he was surfing. The Maui Police Department says first responders tried to save the man on shore, but he later died at a nearby hospital. The Queen of Denmark shocked her country today when she announced on live television that she will abdicate the throne. Nobody was expecting that. After 52 years on the throne, Queen Margrethe II shared the news on her annual New Year's Eve address. She will officially step down in mid-January. She said the decision came after a back surgery made her think about the future and giving over the responsibility to the next generation. Tonight, we're remembering legendary stand-up comedian Shecky Green, who died today at the age of 97. Green was best known as a headliner in Las Vegas, working with greats like Elvis and Frank Sinatra. Famous for his improv, Green was a hit on TV, too, appearing on The Tonight Show more than 60 times. When we come back, there is more good news tonight about the messages of hope written on all that confetti falling in Times Square. There's good news tonight about hope, optimism, and our dreams as we look forward to 2024. When the clock strikes 12 in Times Square, the flurry of confetti will be carrying messages of hope for the year ahead. Coming to wish on the wishing wall. That's because all month long, visitors at New York City's wishing wall. I wish to have a good 2024 put pen to paper. My wish is to get a full-time job out of college. You want to come make a wish with us? Write it on a piece of confetti. Each tiny piece, a big dream for a brighter future. My wish is for God to surround me with great people. My wish this year is for more health, more love, and more positivity. My wish is for my mom to have a blessed life. I wish for world peace. There were also hopes for healing. I wish for my brother's good health and his treatment to be very successful. Family, health, and happiness. Three, two, one, happy new year! Adventure. My wish is to travel the world. And there were words of love for the little ones yet to come. This one reads, I wish for a healthy baby from your future dad. And I wish for a healthy baby boy in May 2024. In the year ahead, so many have their eyes on the prize. My wish is to be a Broadway star. It's to meet Taylor Swift. My wish is to break into the publishing industry. My wish for 2024 is to get into medical school. 
For others, connection is key. My wish for the new year is for peace, good health, and much love to New York City. I wish for a boyfriend. To fall more in love every day. I wish for happiness and love for my family in 2024. Millions of pieces of confetti swirling through the sky, a collection of dreams for all good things in the year ahead. All good things to you. That is NBC Nightly News for this New Year's Eve. Stick around for Sunday Night Football starting in just a moment. And don't miss our special presentation of Fireworks Around the World. That's tonight on our streaming network, NBC News Now, at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm Kate Snow. For all of us here at NBC News, stay safe, have a great night, and a very happy New Year. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.